Hello everyone and welcome back to my video. In today's video, we're going to be going over CEO 2023. And while it's not a major this time around, with the amount of top talent showing up, it's going to feel like a major anyway. For our top 16 seeds, you have MPG, Sean, Fatality, and Kobe in 13th. Aaron, Jazo, Omega, and Goblin in 9th. For our 7th seeds, you have MBD and Almighty, which is Jake. In 5th, you have Anathema and Yara. 4th, you have Mudes. 3rd, you have Apollo Kage. 2nd, you have the Buzz. And then winning the entire thing is supposed to be Riddles. The first player I want to take a look at is going to be Chunky Kong. Now, he's just coming off a top 8 at MomoCon, so hopefully he'll be able to bring some momentum from that tournament into this weekend. The first matchup that he's supposed to lose is against Fatality, but Fatality hasn't been playing a ton recently. He is getting back into the swing of things slowly and slowly, but he still doesn't have a ton of reps under his belt, and neither does Chunky Kong. But I would probably still favor Chunky Kong in this environment just because he has been playing a lot more of the games. He's been going to more tournaments in general. And plus, he has the momentum. And also, Donkey Kong is a character that can bully Falcon super hard off stage and in the disadvantage. That's kind of the one thing about Donkey Kong that is really great is that his advantage state is so insanely good. And that brings me to him versus Apollo Kage. Now, Chunky Kong and Apollo Kage, they played once before at Let's Make Moves Miami, and it went to Apollo Kage. But Snake is definitely a character that you can keep in the disadvantage. That's kind of the one weakness about him. And even if Snake is trying to get out of disadvantage using trades, that's actually probably going to work out for Donkey Kong. He's one of the few characters in the game that actually does have that weight advantage, can last a little bit longer than Snake. So taking trades isn't even the end of the world for you. And I definitely think that's an upset that could happen because Donkey Kong can keep Snake in the disadvantage. He is able to take those trades. But also... Apollo Kage is an amazing player, and Fatality, same thing. They can both beat up Chunky Kong super hard because he is playing DK, so he's going to have to use the hits that he's getting with his character extremely well. Like, he's going to have to make the most out of everything because these are two very tough opponents. Next player I want to take a look at is going to be Kobe. Now, Kobe, unfortunately, in the winner's side of bracket, does have to run into the boss, which is definitely not a great matchup for him, considering he got pretty owned at Combo Breaker. Now, there is definitely some adaptation that could have come in within that time frame, but I would still favor the boss in that one. But the loser's side of bracket, I actually think, is pretty decent for Kobe. He should be able to get a win over Riku, even though Riku is a player that definitely should be on your radar as an up-and-comer. I would still favor Kobe there. Then he would go into Aaron, which is always an interesting one, because these guys have played a lot. The record is 10-8 in kobe's favor so it does go kind of 50 50 but slightly weighed towards kobe so maybe at the major level you would favor him here but also aaron's a player that you can never really count out so that's going to be scary regardless though both of them would have to go into yara after which is a very tough draw but there's a potential that they go into Mudes as well, and Kobe has been able to take sets off Mudes in the past, so I also think he's a player that will be able to beat Yara. He's one of the few people in this tournament that I think has a shot versus Yara, because that's going to be a pretty big deal. If you want to win this tournament, you're going to have to probably get through Yara at some point. I think Kobe is the caliber of player to do it. Now, it's definitely not going to be easy. Yara's been playing very well as late and one of the favorites to take it, but Kobe, when he's playing well, we saw it at Circus CFL, he can pop off super hard, and I think there's definitely a possibility of that happening this tournament. And before we do move on to the top eight, I think the two regions that are going to do really well at this event are going to be Florida and Georgia because you just have a ton of top talent showing up. From Florida, it's mainly going to be players like Anathema who are going to give you their big runs, but Goblin can pop up. Esem is a player with potential. Riku is extremely talented. And then for Georgia, you have Jazzo, Omega, Fatality, just kind of the classic that are usually showing up at events. Chunky Kong is another one from Florida that we already talked about. Beast Mode, Paul, like they have a ton of top talent showing up. There's probably one I'm forgetting, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple of them sneak their way into top eight. So I think our two seven seeds of Almighty and MVD are the most volatile players in this top eight outside of Riddles. And the fact that they could either just not appear in this top eight, or if they do appear in this top eight, they could actually go pretty far. For MVD, he's been a little bit inconsistent lately. He's had some good tournaments, some bad ones. I know he didn't do amazing at the last tournament that he went to, but regardless, I think he can bounce back here. Despite all the amazing snake players that are making waves right now, MVD is still the best by far with the Nakina, which I know is only one small part of Snake's game plan. But when you are so good with one specific tool, you're able to abuse people off stage so well especially when it is nikita like it's not just like he's really good at placing his f tilts yes that's useful nikita you can get so many edge guards so many traps it's just such an amazing tool to have a mastery over and then almighty is another very interesting one because he hasn't been to a tournament since collision so he's been gone a little bit i don't imagine he would have switched off steve i still think he's probably going to be playing steve here which makes him always a threat to pretty much everyone in the bracket because he is going to be hitting you insanely hard his neutral is very hard to deal with but there's also a couple steve slayers in this bracket i think anath was really good versus steve mudes is one of the best players in the world versus steve dove buzz has had a lot of success so it's definitely going to be tough for almighty but if he's playing really well i think he could definitely top eight this tournament and then maybe even go a little bit further in it so our fifth seeds are anathema and yara and i'll get to yara in a little bit i want to talk about anathema right now 
he is an extremely explosive player. Nath was one of the scariest players in the world for me to run into in a bracket. Like, if I had to pick someone I would never want to play, Anathema is definitely on that list just because his neutral is very strong, but his conversions with Rob are ridiculous. He is the best player in the world with Rob by far at killing him in one hit. And while Zamba is still the better Rob right now because he is on that magic Japan juice, Anathema's conversions are pretty much uncontested. He is so insanely good with this character. The amount of prowess he has in tech skill is just higher levels than everyone else. And the Rob players are starting to catch up as well, but Anathema is just so good at that stuff. And it makes him a serious threat and literally every single player in this tournament, like Anathema could beat anyone in the world. He's been come close to being tweaked. He's beaten the likes of players like Onin, like Mude. So I'm really excited see how he performs here and i think he could definitely take a couple upsets so our fourth seed is going to be mutes and for mutes i feel like once he gets into a top eight of a tournament i feel a lot safer about predicting him to win it now you can literally say that about anyone but when leo's in the top eight of the tournament i feel the exact same as i did earlier the second mutes gets in there he is a serious candidate for winning the entire thing because he does have a couple inconsistencies that are keeping him outside of these top eight sometimes whether it be external just because peach is an incredibly hard difficult character in the bracket once mutes gets in these top eights he feels really scary and he has good records versus pretty much everyone in the top eight he's got winning records on everyone except the buzz and yara yara who he's never played before so the buzz is definitely going to be his biggest opponent that's a 6-2 record there signs of life of course but usually it is going into the buzz's favor so hopefully for his sake apollo kage is able to take out the buzz and he does have a winning record on apollo kage technically but also they've only ever played once and it was like three years ago so you can't really count that so mutis is a player that i think could win this bracket but i would not bet on him until he gets in the top eight but once in the top eight mutis just feels like almost an inevitability and our third seed is going to be Apollo Kage. Now, I think his hardest opponent in this bracket is definitely going to be DeBuzz, just considering that DeBuzz has a 1-0 record versus him at Let's Make Big Moves, where it was a 3-0. You're also going to have DeBuzz on the Rosalina, which I actually think does fairly well versus Snake. I think that's one of her better matchups versus the top tier characters, because she's able to deal with grenades so well. Like, her downbeat just gives her full grenade control. You also have Luma, who's able to go in there, explode the grenades. When she's juggling, her up air is so massively disjointed, plus Luma, that a lot of the time she's not going to be getting hit by the grenades, so she's just going to get to rack that damage on and on keep snake in the disadvantage without going for the trades which can be incredibly tricky now you are still playing rosalina which isn't a great character there are still ways to exploit it snake still does like 80 damage off of a single grenade hit so it's going to be really scary for the buzz but i would still favor him in there just because his record versus snake is overall very good he's beaten apollo kage the only time they play Outside of that, though, I think Apollo Kage, this bracket isn't terrible for him. I think he can beat Mides. I think he can beat Riddles. He can beat Anathema. He can beat all these players. He can even beat the Buzz, right? Like, once you beat an MKLeo and reverse through a Gutsuni, I feel like anything is literally possible for Apollo Kage, and I think he thinks that too, which is a really scary mentality to go into. So, he's definitely a front runner for this tournament, but he has to get past the Buzz. I think that's going to be his biggest obstacle. So you have this final three for the tournament of Riddles, DeBuzz, and Yara. And the reason that I haven't really talked about either of these players and the reason I skipped Yara is because these are my three front runners to win the tournament. And they kind of make this little triangle. You have DeBuzz, who is, should be beating Yara, right? Like, he does very well versus Samus. He beat Yara at Battle of BC 3-0, the only time they played. I already talked about this with Snake, but Rosalina, really good at dealing with the projectiles with her down B and using Luba to be a big annoyance. So if DeBuzz and Yara play... I would favor DeBuzz there. If DeBuzz and Riddles play, this one's a little bit more back and forth, but Riddles is typically taking the set. You do have DeBuzz taking the last encounter, but usually you would favor Riddles there. And then you have Riddles versus Yara, and Riddles has struggled a little bit versus Samus. He did drop a set to Siski at Battle of BC. He's also beaten Siski in the past, and they are different players, Yara and Siski. But I would say that Yara is a little bit better than Siski right now. Even after Siski run at Battle of BC, it was just really, really impressive from Siski. But Yara has been playing really well consistently at multiple tournaments, so I'm to give him the benefit that i would say that he is the better player right now and should be able to beat riddles as well so you have this weird little triangle but the weirdest part about the triangle is riddles is potentially playing shotos at this tournament he tweeted on twitter that he was potentially just going to be playing ken and ryu because of street fighter 6 i don't even know if it's potentially he might just be 100 doing that now riddles shotos are also very good like they're nothing to laugh at he's beaten the buzz before with the shotos but it tips the triangle way more heavily into someone's favor when DeBuzz Riddles was already the more fickle matchup, and now you have DeBuzz not playing his main character, or rather Riddles not playing his main character potentially, I would definitely favor DeBuzz here. And like I said earlier, there are other people that could be DeBuzz. Apollo Kage could be DeBuzz. Mutes could be DeBuzz. But to me, he seems to be the clear favorite to win the tournament. I think the only player that I would kind of expect for him to be taken out by would be Riddles. Anathema as well as another potential one, but my favorite to win this thing definitely got to be DeBuzz. And I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Sports been absolutely unreal. Let me know what you guys think. If there's a player that I left out or something that I just got wrong, please let me know down below. Be sure to sub all that yada yada, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.